What's up guys, my name is Carl and welcome to Tech Hunter. On this channel I check out a lot of PC hardware as well as other day to day tech to make your lives that little bit easier. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So behind me there used to be three monitors. Two were 1080p 24 inch monitors and one was a 28 inch 4K G-Sync monitor. Whilst it looked impressive initially, it only ever really made sense when I was using my PC for anything other than gaming. Video editing, moving files around, web browsing and things like that. It was always nice to be able to have a lot of things open at once across all three screens. But more often than not, it just I just kind of stuck to that one middle display and then occasionally had File Explorer open on the screen to my right or Chrome open whilst doing stuff on the primary middle screen. Sounds great, right? Well, almost. For gaming, my two smaller monitors that were beside me offered me nothing. The middle 4K monitor was nice when playing less demanding games and esports titles, but most games never really got anywhere near 60 FPS without lowering a lot of in game settings. So a 4K resolution and poor textures never really made much sense. G Sync helped to kind of smooth out those frames, but not enough. My old 4K display was also a TN panel, so the colors were inaccurate, and unless I sat up straight, the colors would change depending on how much I slouched in my chair or due to its poor viewing angles of the TN panel. My PC has got a GTX 980 Ti, a fairly powerful card, but if you want to be playing games at 4K Ultra and at greater than 60 FPS, you'll need either two 1080 Ti's, two Titan XP's, or even a $3,000 Titan Volta GPU, bringing your, bringing your minimum spend to around 2,000 pounds, including a 4K display. So having a 4K display and a 3 year old graphics card doesn't really make much sense. The fact that 4K 144Hz monitors are on their way is just mind boggling for me right now. But another thing to remember is that 3840 times 2160 is technically a sum and it equals just under 8.3 million. And that means a 4K display has about 8.3 million pixels, a 1080p screen has just over 2 million pixels and this new display behind me is the 3440 by 1440 ultra wide display which has around 5 million pixels. So if I want to make a bit more of my GPU, having 3 million less pixels to push means I can achieve higher frame rates. So picking up a monitor like this one with a 120Hz refresh rate also makes a bit more sense, right? Nearly. Achieving 120fps on Ultra at this resolution is just as unobtainable as it was at getting 4K60 for me. So what was the point? Well this is where things start to make more sense. Having those high frame rates and gorgeous textures just aren't obtainable right now unless I spend thousands on a GPU upgrade. So I thought about making my day-to-day -day life more enjoyable, more colourful and much more immersive. What this monitor behind me costs, I could have easily kept my old display and bought a 1080 Ti for the price of this display. But it still had the dull colours, a custom TN panel, a 60Hz refresh rate and less immersion. If I want 4K textures, I can easily connect my TV up that is six feet away from my PC and enjoy a more high res picture at the cost of some added latency. So I've not really lost anything, but I've gained an Acer Predator X34P, a 1900R curved 34 inch IPS 120Hz G-Sync 21x9 display that I'm in love with. The ultra wide aspect ratio lets you do extra things like having four pages open at once on Microsoft Word, on display being easy to read and work on them all at once or having an insane amount of width on your excel spreadsheet or for me more width on your video editing timeline in sony vegas yes i use vegas i'm still a noob at editing also more color accuracy compared to my tm panel for video editing and thumbnail creating more real estate when it comes to video games seeing things in your peripheral vision that just weren't there before because of the narrower FOV of a 16 by nine display. And whether that added real estate helps you spot an enemy on the hill to your left hand side in Fortnite or seeing more inside of your car in Project Cars 2. Watching movies isn't really something I do very much at my desk, but losing those black bars across the top and bottom of the movie is a nice bonus. As with everything though, there are downsides. Watching 16 by nine content on a 21 by nine display is a tad annoying like 99% of videos you'll watch, they will come with two big black bars either side of your screen. On an OLED display, this probably wouldn't be as bad, but a backlit display makes them a bit more obvious. The screen also effectively goes from 34 inches of ultra-wide goodness to a 27 inch standard display when watching videos. 
I mentioned earlier about gaming. While most modern games look great, there are a few issues with some older games or unoptimized ones that have issues more with UIs and menus than the actual gameplay. One thing I would like to have seen, which is a bit disappointing, is the ability to split your display more than twice inside Windows 10. Like when you drag a window to the left or the right hand side of your screen and you're given the option of splitting your screen. It would have been nice if you could do it with three windows as you have that extra width instead of just having two fat ones. I've also found myself resizing windows more often to accommodate more things on my screen but that's more down to the amount of monitors I had before than the 4K resolution. And that issue can easily be fixed by just adding more ultra wide monitors in the future. I know this video might just be a lot of talking about nothing really to some people, but it's more of a heads up that 4K might be the next best thing, but for gaming, consoles and PCs, just aren't ready for it. Ultra wide monitors are becoming more affordable, super enjoyable to use and require less pixels and less GPU power. If you want to see more about this specific monitor behind me, make sure you are subscribed to this channel as I will be doing a full in-depth review of this Predator X34P in the future where I'll be talking about all the other extras that come along with this monitor like the RGB lighting and all that kind of crap. So remember to subscribe to see what they are. But other than that, that's pretty much it for this video. Remember guys, as always, if you like this kind of stuff, feel free to click that like button down below. And if you didn't, click that dislike button. Leave your comments down below, let me know what you thought about today's video. And if you decide my face hasn't offended you, don't forget to click that subscribe button so we can see each other again soon. Thank you, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.